Governor John Hickenlooper aims to spend $10.5 million over three years to establish a housing, addiction, treatment, and vocational training program for the chronically homeless individuals at Fort Lyon in Southeast Colorado. Um, now this article is November 30th, 2012. Um, and it's interesting how the funding is arranged because I have gone through it and it's very confusing to me. I'm like, wait a minute, was it 8,000? Okay, but five, no, I mean 8 million and then 10 million over here, five over here, three over here. They get it from so many different places that when you read the, the actual literature on it, it sounds as if it's not that costly. But that's because they're accepting private funds, they're having partnerships with um, many local businesses, which they say that as if it's a good thing um, for vocational training, internships. What it is is slave labor. These prisons, it's going to be exactly the same as it was when it was a prison. And when it was a prison, it was shut down by our, our good friend and deceased man, <laughs> I, I just, uh, Tom Clements. And isn't it so ironic that he died about not even a month before this was all just rushed on through without anyone saying a word, without anyone slowing him down, questioning him really? Not seriously. Tom Clements was seriously questioning him and seriously had some issues with Fort Lyon in general. That's why he shut it down. Because he was a ethical man, and he saw that there was abuse there, that the funding wasn't enough to fix the place, okay? What they don't tell you in any of the recent articles at all, it doesn't mention it at all, it also doesn't mention it in the bill, is that this place is filled with asbestos, okay? And they already had prisoners working in there, prisoners renovating the place, trying to fix it, doing all kinds of things without protection. Well, and that's bad enough that it has it, but then they don't even give them masks, don't give them gloves, make them work for hours on end or they get punished. And don't think that that's not going on with the homeless people too. It was also written into the bill that DOC, Department of Corrections, as they transfer the title of the building, or the Veterans Administration actually does, um, or was it, oh yeah, I'm not sure, I'm not sure on that one, but something along, when the transfer happened from DOC to this housing facility, they were instructed not to take any of their equipment with them. That was part of the agreement, was that, well, why? Why can't Department of Corrections take equipment that is theirs, that they need to use in another prison, probably? Why would they have to leave it there? This isn't a prison, right? This is a, um, what is it, a treatment center, a vocational training center, substance abuse treatment, mental health, what is this place? Transitional housing? What, what in the world? We can't make up our mind. Right now, it's, it's, it's being applauded by all kinds of people. And, and it's very disturbing to me that people, once I explain just a little bit, I go, wait, look at it this way, and immediately they catch on to what I think it is. And I don't have solid 100% proof that this is his motive, but um, I'm kind of guessing that the guy who arrests homeless, makes it illegal to feed them, won't let them camp out, won't even let them go to the bathroom anywhere without being arrested. That same guy is really pushing this. Why? Because this is, first off, we are Denver, and Denver is one of a few cities that everything gets shoved into. We are a New World Order hub. Unfortunately, um, it's the truth. <laughs> and so we often get things 
first. However, I think these things have popped up all over the all over the place, you know. And unfortunately, this has been going on for years. When I look back, there's material dated back to, you know, July of 2007 and probably way before then. But we talk about FEMA camps as if, okay, they're going to have a disaster and shove us all in there. Or they're going to take our guns and shove us all in there. Maybe first they're going to quietly start taking people. Because first off, it's a testing ground for how people react and and the little glitches and problems that will arise as they start to do this. These people won't be missed. Okay? I'm not saying that they won't be missed by me. Like, I won't miss them. Like, I'm saying they won't be missed by very many people. These people are transient, which means they move a lot. If they do have any ties in the city, if they did tell anyone at all, it's not going to be unexpected for this, for them to get up and move. They're homeless, right? Okay. The other thing I have a big problem with is they keep over and over saying how it costs $40,000 a year for every homeless person. That's what it costs to us taxpayers. Really. And then they break it down into um, use of medical services, um, shelter and food, which if they go to some place like the rescue mission, um, most of those are privately donated. They do get food, federal grants and stuff, but it's not all that much of taxpayer money. <laughs> you you pay way more for other very useless things. So they use Medicaid, yes, um, and they use shelter services. Now what else was there? Yes, they put in, like, a huge expense for jail. And when they explained it, they're like, yes, they, they cost this much when they go to jail. When we arrest them for what? For loitering? For what? Camping out? When, a, when we have made homelessness illegal, that's when it becomes costly. Because the biggest cost... I think it was like 20000 per person, which I think is a little bit high. Either that or we're overpaying our jail people. <laughs> we're real, man. Because um, are they really getting arrested that much? And is that for just being homeless? I mean, to link one statistic to another, and I, these are skewed numbers. And nobody asks for any representation or of where they got this data, because I don't know where they got this data. Isn't it hard to get data on homeless people, an accurate count of people who, by their definition, are <laughs> unreachable, un <laughs> you know, they are underserved because we can't, we have outreach programs just to find them. We don't even know how many there are or where they are. So how can you accurately ever estimate how much money you're spending on them. I think they just throw out numbers. And if this is true, you know what would make that really easy? That one part of it is make some stupid laws, some stupid harassment. Make that go away, okay? If they are not hurting anyone and not bothering anyone, I don't care if they sleep in a park. But the police do, and they harass them, and, I mean, come on, they go to jail, and they go to jail for drinking, for whatever, and that was one of them, too, was detox and substance abuse counseling, what else, mental health services, but somehow when the app, okay, so those are what we spend the 40000 on a year per person, really, because if we spend that much a year on homeless people just to um, take care of them, I know this is a really crazy idea, but why don't we just give them 20000 <laughs> I mean, we're already spending 40000 on them, right? Say, okay, here's 20000 You can get a house. You can take care of yourself. And you have to promise not to use any federal um, freebies like medical care, let's say that, or mental health. And if you go to jail, then you, you're cut off. Okay? So, I mean, I know they should work for it, whatever, but if we're already 
spending 40000 Hell, that cuts it right in half, and they'll all be housed. Right? Because that's all it comes down to, right? Is we just give them a house, and then, and then they're fixed, right? No? That's not right? Oh. Okay. Okay, well, we'll spend the other ten on, on substance abuse and mental health treatment. Because once we do that, then they'll be fixed, right? You get the point, people? Doing this is as insane as just giving them money. And, pff, fuck it. Why not give them money? The next thing they're doing, which is insane, in the funding department, is Section 8 housing vouchers. Now, they are going to get housing vouchers to pay for part of the operating costs, so they will get a Section 8 housing voucher, which pretty much pays their rent at this transitional housing facility in Fort Lyon. And then when they get out of there, it pays for one year of housing, their rent, okay? Here's a crazy idea. Why don't we just give them the housing voucher themselves? And just leave them to go fend for themselves. Oh, but then we couldn't, one, we couldn't experiment on them. We couldn't drug them and make sure they're subservient. Maybe torture them, you know, twist their minds a little bit. Make sure when they do get out, they're good little slaves. Um, I think they might be even killing them there, okay? Don't think it couldn't happen. It's happened before, repeatedly in history. So it's not like I'm... It's a far-fetched idea. And these people are suicidal, right? Anyway, they're depressed, right? Or they're old, they already killed their liver from drinking, so, you know, they just passed away in the night. We don't know what happened. Hung themselves, I don't know. Yeah, he was depressed. <laughs> yeah, poor guy. Or they just disappear. Nobody even questions anything. Because they are out in the middle of nowhere. Out where you cannot hear them scream. And if they don't die there, they will die soon after from some of the horrific things that they will be exposed to there. No doubt there is asbestos all over that place. Radon also. Um, I think that the man, there was a man that said he had a staph infection there. So there you go. And I'm sure that the, the level of care, at the rate that they are saying, I don't have it right in front of me, but it was like, okay, well, on the streets, I think it was 10000 was spent on mental health or substance abuse treatment for each person. That's what it calculated. But in there, it would be like 2000 Like, why would it go down in price if this is state-of-the-art care? And out on the street, they probably, are, I don't know any homeless people that are like, I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Maybe they get counseling. That kind of shows you how good counseling works. I don't know. Um, yeah. Do we not get that yet? <laughs> if substance abuse counseling worked and they're receiving it, why are they still drinking? And if um, mental health abuse, or whatever, mental health abuse, yeah, mental health whatever psychiatry worked <laughs> if therapy was therapeutic wouldn't these guys be perfect normal citizens that we could welcome into our community instead of having to go shove them off into a little hole and one thing nobody seems to care about is these are human beings and they should be treated with dignity and respect they are not a problem to sweep under the rug, okay? And it's it's disgusting to me that this is going on. And I know there are some sinister motives. I believe, personally I believe, that this is the reason that Clements was murdered. And the bills that are going into effect right now, all, all of them almost, lead to this. Something around this and similar facilities this isn't the only one okay i don't know of others but i know they're procuring them i know that there are bills that are actually specified for people to be encouraged to seek out funding to seek out leasing opportunities 
for new mental health and substance abuse treatment facilities because they are they are assessing a need in the community for more mental health and they are anticipating a growth in both substance use problems or it was misuse yeah and mental health treatment well the DSM-5 has changed I believe you all need to look at it if you well you just should look at it first of all just read through it to see if you had any doubts about the business of psychiatry and the drugging of America it's killing us people there are some legitimate treatments for very very disturbed people the rest of it it's bullshit at best and it's mind control and and I don't know just life destroying at its worst people die because of this they commit suicide all the time in such high numbers young people in such high numbers they die of heart attacks because of the Ritalin and things I mean become zombies they are not themselves anymore how many times have you heard I didn't like I took them once when I was young my parents made me I felt dead inside I didn't feel anything I understand how these kids can go on rampages. It's not necessarily because they're mad. If you have an idea of something sinister and you take these drugs, you're not necessarily feeling the rage of it, but I could understand how these kids feel nothing. I didn't feel anything. Good, bad, indifferent. I didn't even feel indifferent. I was so indifferent. And I would purposely like not take them and me and my mom would struggle about that because she liked it when I was on them because I just didn't psh, didn't bother anyone and that's exactly what they want they want to put these people through these turnstiles of mental health treatment keep some of the really you know rebellious people who just won't <laughs> be re-educated okay but the ones who are willing to take the drugs willing to take on the values and characteristics appropriate to get out of the hospital, those people will be re-entered into society. The others kept, the really bad ones killed, and the other ones tortured and just for fun, raped and good stuff like that. Because these people at the heart are all freaking sick motherfuckers. I don't even want to say it because it sounds crazy, but they are Satanists at, at the very deepest level and at the very deepest meaning of that. Um, and I know this more than I know my own name, <laughs> okay? I know. Anyway, I'm not going to go into that. But I believe that Clemens was murdered because of this. There was no way they would be able to get this by him. He wouldn't let it happen. He closed down a prison that we had just bought. For, I mean, you don't do that. Prisons are big money. This is a brand new one. They were all happy they built it. No, it was a human rights violation, and he was doing the ethical thing. He also cut down juveniles in the court system. No, you can't do that. That is your bread and butter. My God, you get them in there young, and they just come back and come back. It's a never-ending cash cow. Give me a break, people. Evan Evil is not the answer here. And Al Turkey... I thought was and maybe he is because I think all these people kind of are intertwined this is not a US problem or a Colorado problem it's not even a jihad problem when we involve El Turkey and Saudi Arabia you now and read up on it you'll know what I'm talking about no this is worldwide evil infiltration and these places need to be shut the fuck down Okay, I know there are people who are needed to run these places. FEMA camps, military bases, mental health treatment, veteran treatment, vocational training, all of this fucking shit has to stop. And you know how it stops? If you work at these places, you don't go to jail. I mean, you don't go, yeah, don't go to the jail. Don't go to work. I'm getting all excited now. Don't go to work. 
Okay? If you work for the BLM and you're taking land from people, don't show up tomorrow. If you know something that's going on that's illegal, if you know of people being bribed, if you know of any bad things, you out them immediately. And then you quit. Okay? But if you are, well, I'm just a little person and I really don't have anything to do with that yet. It does kind of seem dicey, but whatever. I need a job. I need a job. We're going to lose our house. Okay? So I got to I gotta go out there and fucking house prisoners. Yes, prisoners that are from Mexico and bringing in diseases. What happens with these little kids? No. Okay? Department of Transportation people? Department of Homeland Security. Oh my goodness. How about the police that are riding around as this, there's freaking, I saw them in their little, it's an army colored, army style new getup they had on their little SWAT trucks on the side. They are like all tough. Where were they going? Hmm. They were just playing. It's like little boys just playing with their toys. And they're just about as competent. Maybe the little boys have a little bit more restraint. Okay. But people, we have to bring morality back to things. And sacrifice is part of that. If you are working for these people, you need to quit. That means you lose your job, you lose your house, you lose your wife, your car, your dog. Well, if you don't, you're going to anyway. Because we all will end up eventually in these camps. And at best, some of us will get through there and back out. Or we might actually probably just live there while they live somewhere else. Okay, I keep saying it and it is so true. If you look at what our legislation and the funding is. The Hunger Games, that movie, is our future. A FEMA camp, a kind of, you know, think of what the tribes get, you know? The reservations. You call it a different thing, it's all the same. It's relocating people, keeping them out of the way of the rich, famous elites, the sickos. Torture them, use them for their labor, sacrifice them to Satan, <laughs> whatever. And then you re-educate a few to be your minions. The rest will die. Okay, either by killing them or exposing them to disease and or harmful things like asbestos. <coughs> which will kill them pretty quickly within years after they leave that place. So they won't be a drain on our economy anymore. And actually, they'll be a boost to our economy. And in one of the papers, they're like, oh, it's so wonderful, we'll save on costs because we're using inmate labor to, re to renovate the place. Well, they couldn't renovate it before. You know, they couldn't even demolish it because of the asbestos. Okay, this is not a historical site that's so great. This is a place that it's convenient and they don't they know that nobody's overseeing it nobody's gonna check them and they're making legislation to make sure that they you can't okay all the things they repeal and I've noticed something in this last year more and more they pass a bill they wait a few months and then they go back and they revise it they amend it and nobody notices and they totally change the context of the bill or the most important thing of the bill, or oversight. And it's it's so sick, man. It's illegal, it's got to be. But it's, it's out of control. There's no one to go to. Who do I go to? We sue them? What? They're going to take me before a corrupt judge? Awesome. Do I petition my representative? <laughs> Whatever. How would I change it when I vote someone else in? Yeah. Like, the voting machines work, or anything like that. Even if I could vote, there's no choice. It's all rigged at this point. We really, we gave up our power. We had power, we gave it up. The only power we have now is not to fight back, because they have plenty of weapons to take you out, and plenty of jails to put you in. We need to mentally stay positive, not give in to the fear or the intimidation. And then opt out, period. Opt out of everything you have a problem with. If it's a little problem, opt out. 
demand is changed. And then off to back in. <laughs> but if we don't demand any changes, we're not going to get any. The VA hospital abuses its patients. We don't hold anyone accountable. Department of Correction makes these people work for nothing. Slave labor, it's illegal. We don't do anything about it. There's monopolies of utilities, of every single thing. We don't do anything about it. Federal Reserve, <laughs> it's illegal, unconstitutional, we let it go on. And that controls everything. Do you get what I'm saying here? It goes on and on and on and on. Okay? And this mental health shit, last thing I want to point out in the hypocrisy of all of it. Okay, so they pushed this bill for changing the civil commitment rules. And now, anyway, I'll get into that later. But while they're all hyping this up, and it's an 81-page bill, pretty, pretty severe. And because we have to take care of these mentally ill people, they're just shooting people up, and they cite the Batman shooting and all these recent school shootings, and we have to stop them before they do it. And that's part of it. You don't even have to be in imminent danger anymore, just to, that you might become dangerous. Okay? Somebody's opinion. Lock you up forever. Or as long as they want. Anyway. So, while that's going on and we're all, we have to stop this. We want answers. we got to help it. Not one more child. Oh my god. Okay. And they think mental health is the answer. We need to get them counseling, get them treatment, get them all this whatever. At the same time they um, are doing that, they put in a bill to limit the liability of a professional to warn of imminent danger to a victim. So say somebody says, I'm going to kill my wife. I and is serious about it, and he's in his counseling session, um, and that person doesn't tell the wife, and the wife gets killed. Somebody in the family decides to sue, um, and whatever. They had reasonable, like, knowledge of it. Or it could be a teacher, or it could be, I mean, they have all these public service people, okay? The same people who can lock you up with nothing have no liability when you actually do something and they haven't done anything about it. It's kind of like social services. Take your kids away for nothing, but if some kid is being put in a fucking closet and starved to death or lives in a cage forever, they'll come into the house, look around, see this stuff going on, and let them go, oh, well, you know, teach their own. They walk away. Don't take the kid away. But if you don't vaccinate, you better watch out. You homeschool, that kid is is abused. Yeah, you're an abuser. They're going to take your kid. It's all backwards. No liability to help when they really should, which is very few cases on both sides are that severe. Um, and also, every affordance to overstep their, their role in society and destroy lives. 